think we need to redefine the word selfish. Hey guys, it's Ifeema. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, my name is Ifeema and I'm a Nigerian content creator living in London. I make videos all about home, life, and style. And recently I've been doing a lot of traveling, well for me anyway. And I recently went to Paris on my own, so it was my first proper solo trip. Well, actually my second, but my first international solo trip. And I was in Paris for five days on my own. And it kind of got me thinking that it would be a good video to share some of my female solo traveler tips. So. If you're interested, keep on watching. So I have a list of pros and cons of solo travel and I also have some tips for you guys that I wanted to share. I'm gonna start off with the cons so we can end the video on a positive note. So this applies to things like accommodation. If there are two people split in your room, it ends up being a lot cheaper than if it's just the one person. Other things like transportation. So if you're getting an Uber somewhere, obviously if you're with a friend or a partner, you can split that cost. But if you're on your own, that's all on you. And then one thing that I noticed that when I went to Paris was the food thing. So normally when you're out at a restaurant and it's you and someone else, you can both order different dishes and share. So in that way you're able to kind of you know, get two for one. But when you're on your own, if you can't make up your mind about two different dishes and you want to try both, you just kind of have to get both. And more times than not, unless you're super hungry, you might end up wasting it. So that happened to me a couple times. So it's definitely more expensive to travel on your own. That's the first con. When I went to Paris, I was really determined to get nice pictures of myself because I don't typically prioritize getting pictures. So this time around, I actually decided to buy a little travel tripod. I got my Bluetooth remote and I was setting up tripods everywhere I went to take pictures. And it's a little awkward, it's very cumbersome. And especially for me, who's not used to doing that, it's definitely takes some getting used to, to getting those shots. And there were so many times where I just wish that I could just ask someone to take my photo. So towards the end of the trip, I actually just start doing that. And more times than not, people were happy to take a photo of me, but there's an element of risk that comes with that too, because you could be asking a pickpocket or someone's gonna run away with your phone or your camera, you don't really know. But obviously if you're traveling with a friend or a partner, it's a lot easier to just say, hey, will you take a photo of me? I love my own company, but there were moments where I definitely wish that I had someone with me like when I was buying my Chanel bag for instance which I've talked about like in every single video it feels like that was such a big moment for me I was really panicking about it I definitely think it would have been a different experience if I had someone with me on a less materialistic note even things like sharing memories with people so when I was on the river Sienne I was very aware of the fact that I was on my own. There were so many couples on that. I didn't realize it would be such a romantic thing to do. So there are definitely certain things where you kind of just think, oh, it would be nice to have someone here. All the planning's on you. You don't have someone to share the burden with. I'm the organizer in my group. So I'm the one that's usually planning things to do, booking things, planning itineraries. So that's my pretty much my everyday reality anyway. Another con, you always have to keep your stuff with you. <laughs> I was just gonna be like, what the hell? You know when you're like going, let's say, to the bathroom at a restaurant or something and you're with a friend, you can just leave your jacket or your shopping at the table because your friend will watch it, right? When you're on your own, you have to take everything with you. So sometimes it can feel a bit tedious. So let's move on to pros. <laughs> you get to do absolutely what you want to do. It is 100% a selfish trip. And I know that sounds so bad, but I think we need to redefine the word selfish because putting yourself first at times can actually be a form of self-love in my opinion. Just being able to wake up and think, what do I want to do today? It just adds this element of freedom to your days. And I really took advantage of that when I was in Paris. I didn't do a single thing on my trip that I didn't absolutely want to do. And that was honestly, I think why I had such a great time. <laughs> Every single restaurant that I went to in Paris that had a queue, I was prioritized because I was on my own. At Bouillon Pigalle or even at Angelina's, the queues were very easily over an hour long for both restaurants and I still had to queue 
But once you get to that point where the, the host is walking up and down the line and asking, you know, party for one, party for two, party for three. And once they found out I was a party for one, I automatically got bumped up to the front, like clockwork. I didn't need a reservation anywhere because I could always be squeezed in because I'm just on my own. Even things like getting um, seats on tours. So like when I was in Paris, the Louvre was fully booked for the whole weekend that I was there. But luckily, there was one spot left on one of the dates, and I was able to get that ticket because it was just me. I ended up having really interesting conversations with people that I think wouldn't have come up to me if I was in a group. The first restaurant I went to was La Avenue, and I actually met a woman from America. She was really friendly, and we ended up having a really long conversation where I almost started to like think that I had possibly told her too much about myself, but more into that later. I never would have met her if we hadn't both been on our own and then restaurants I felt like waiters were more inclined to like have more of a conversation with me because they could see I was on my own that kind of feeds into as well like getting better service I definitely think that being a solo traveler just makes you an open target I guess for communication which I know sounds crazy people are more likely to come up to you and on the flip side because you're on your own I think you're more inclined to make conversation with people so I went above and beyond to engage with strangers that I kind of typically wouldn't normally. I met a new person like every single day. All right, so those are kind of some pros and some cons that I wanted to share. And now I'm gonna move into some tips. Let all feelings of awkwardness or feeling uncomfortable, just let that go. The first thing I had to tell myself in so many situations was that I'm never gonna see any of these people again. And even if I am, who cares? So when I was that awkward person setting up a tripod <laughs> in front of everyone else taking their photos, I just have to tell myself, you know what? I'm never gonna see these people again. I don't care. So put yourself out of your comfort zone. You're able to grow and you're able to get what you want. Another good example of this is going to restaurants on your own. So I know that for some people that can feel like a really awkward thing. And for me, it actually used to feel really awkward for the longest time. But I I don't know at what point I grew out of that. I think it's one of those things where the more often you do it, you realize it's not that bad. If you're the kind of person that feels awkward about it, bring a book or watch a video on your phone and bring some AirPods. Like you can definitely create your own environment while you're out. But you know, it's also a really good opportunity to people watch or make conversations with fellow diners or your waiter. Don't allow the fact that you're on your own to prevent you from going out. So don't say, oh, because I'm on my own and I'm gonna feel awkward, I'm going to stay in and order room service. No, don't do that. You're doing yourself a disservice. Push yourself. Don't trust people or give them too much information. So that American lady I told you that I met at dinner on my first night, I told her the, the name of the hotel I was staying at. Number one no-no, don't tell anybody where you're staying. But then she told me where she was staying, so I thought, ooh, I could just tell her. But in all honesty, she could have been lying to me, so don't tell anyone where you're staying. I told her where I lived in London, not specifically, but I gave her a general area, which again, number one red flag. I told her how long I was in Paris for. I told her I was in Paris on my own. <laughs> I don't know what got into me. It was either the excitement to be in Paris or the rosé, but never give anyone that kind of information about you, especially not someone that you've just met. We had exchanged numbers and we had talked about potentially meeting up the following day, but neither of us reached out to each other, so I guess in the end she wasn't like, you know, a scary person that was trying to trap me or anything. And on my last night, I went on the cruise on the River Sien. There was a couple there that I met and they were really lovely. We got talking about, I think taking pictures of each other seems to be the one thing that kind of sparks conversation. They had brought a bottle of wine and they gave me some wine. And in the moment I took it and I was like, oh, thank you. Cause I honestly was wishing that I could buy a glass of wine. So I know they had a bottle cause I saw them put the bottle down. They had poured wine for, for themselves from that bottle. So if I had seen them when they were pouring my glass, I would have felt more comfortable. But because I didn't, I decided not to drink it. Some people are professional con artists and they're good at making you trust them almost. So just be really cognizant of that. My point really is just suspect everyone. Like don't ever be too trusting. 
never allow yourself to get too drunk in public. If you're on your own and you're drunk, especially as a female, it just makes you a more attractive victim, basically. So you have to be aware of that. The one time I got tipsy, I was in the comfort of my hotel room and that was a conscious decision that I made on my whole trip. Never allow yourself to be too tired. You don't want to fall asleep in an Uber on your own. And that's not just about travel, that's on a day to day. There are days where I was just so tired, I just decided to sleep. And I could do that because I was on my own. I could do what I wanted, right? But for instance, if I know that I'm tired and I'm gonna push myself to the point where I'm exhausted and I'm not able to like be sharp because I'm so tired, that's me putting myself in a vulnerable position. So you don't ever want to be less than 100% when you're on your own because you have to look out for yourself. I made sure that I stayed in an area that was very safe. I stayed in a hotel that my sister had stayed in before and she told me the area was really safe. And even at that, I didn't let myself be out too, too late. And if I was out late, I made sure I got an Uber right to the front of my hotel. I wasn't gonna get the metro on my own past 10 o'clock. That was a curfew I gave myself. Obviously you do whatever you feel comfortable with. And yes, even though it was more expensive to get Ubers, I just felt that it was worth it to be on the safe side. I'd rather be overly cautious and be safe than be too trusting or too naive and be unsafe. So a lot of the times where I would find myself in a position where I think maybe, <laughs> Do I really want to spend that extra 15 euros for a taxi? I would think to myself, is my safety worth 15 euro? And then I would absolutely be able to justify it that way. For me, because I live in the UK, my phone plan works the same in Europe as it works in the UK. So I have my mobile data, I'm able to make calls the same. So I'm accessible at all points in time. I wouldn't put myself in a position where I can only contact people if I have access to Wi-Fi. You don't only want to be able to communicate with people when you're like sitting at a restaurant or when you're at your hotel, for instance. So if you are traveling somewhere where you don't have a phone plan, I would say get a local SIM card, make sure you have data, make sure you have a plan that allows you to call Call people just so that if you need to contact anyone in an emergency you absolutely can if for whatever reason you need to contact the police an ambulance or whatever the numbers vary from country to country so just make sure that you're aware of who you need to call in any emergency should something come up god forbid of course Travel insurance is something that is so affordable, but so many people don't bother getting it. I actually have an annual worldwide plan and it costs me 35 pounds for the whole year, anywhere in the world. My credit card also has travel insurance. I think it's really important to make sure that should anything happen medically, should something get lost or stolen, that you have coverage for that. This again does not apply to just female solo travelers, but to anybody that's traveling. I 100% recommend travel insurance. Would I recommend solo traveling as a female? Absolutely, 100%. However, with a caveat, please make sure that you do your due diligence and make sure that you're traveling somewhere that is solo travel friendly. There are certain countries that I wouldn't recommend doing this in. I'm not going to list those countries because I don't want to offend anyone. But obviously use your common sense, do your due diligence, and make sure that you feel comfortable. There's a saying that once you start traveling solo, you'll never want to travel with anyone again. I absolutely get it. I loved it so much, and I definitely want to do regular solo travel trips. I hope the pros came across as strongly as the cons, because I actually think that the pros greatly outweigh the cons. Ultimately, if you're someone that can be safety and security conscious, if you're someone that enjoys their own company, you will absolutely love it. And I think that there's something so freeing about it. I had a really great time. I think Paris is a really great city for solo traveling. So yeah, I, I highly recommend it. And I would just encourage all my fellow women out there watching this video to go out and see the world, to not be afraid, don't let anybody hold you back, but of course be safe, be wise, and you know, if you have a gut feeling about anything nine times out of 10, it's for a reason. This is a really important video to have a conversation in the comments. So if you're someone that's traveled solo or you have any tips, maybe there's something I've missed out, maybe there's something you don't agree with, 
please, please leave a comment down below. I would love for the comment section to turn into a resource for other female travelers. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That's one of my other videos. If you like it, you see, consider subscribing. And I will catch you guys in the next one very soon. Stay blessed, stay safe, and take care. Bye.